Welcome back to another beer review. This is Fullerton's Brewing Company out of London, UK. London Pride. Fuller's has been around since 1845. I'm not sure when this beer was released, but I can't imagine it doesn't date back to about the time the brewery was founded. There's a story in the back here that says, authentic, original, and full of character, London Pride is unmistakably London's beer. Brewed with a rich, distinct base of British malt and a diverse blend of Target Goldings Challenger and North Down Hops for vibrancy and balance, the essence of our capital city and the people who call it home. That's the paragraph I just read. It's a little too blurry to see, but you get the idea. The website gives a slightly different story here. It says, brewed to 4.1%, this tawny colored, what's tawny? Premium ale borrows sweet raisin, biscuit, and dried fruit nuts from the crystal malt, while fresh piney herbs emanate from the hops. Rich, smooth, and elegant on the palate, it draws to a clean, satisfying finish with beautifully balanced bitterness. This beer is available all year round. This bottle cost me $5. It has British base malt, which is probably Pilsner, uh, maybe two row. Base malt gives fermentable sugars, but depending on which they use, Pilsner or two row, uh, may give some toasted, some sweetness, some bread, cracker, grainy notes. They also mention crystal malt, now there's a whole array of those with different flavors since they mentioned sweet raisin dried fruit notes that tends to be a crystal 60 or 80 in addition to uh, caramel and toffee for the hops they said target goldings challenger north down target hops are known to give spicy herbal and floral maybe a little bit of citrus in there. Goldings, also known as East Kent Goldings, or EKG for short. I usually get fruity aromas out of those, but you may also get some herbal. From the Challenger hops, you might get some spicy, woody, or earthy notes. North Down hops, which are not quite as common, a floral, piney, and spicy. Most of the British hops, which is what's in this, are low alpha acid, not real strong and bittering. And they also have a low cohumulone, which means any bittering properties they may have is soft on the palate. For the yeast, I'm sure they used a British yeast strain, which very well complements the malt profiles. Body style for this beer should be, I'd say medium, maybe full. 4.7% alcohol. I don't know the IBUs. But for this style of beer, they're typically between 25 to 40. Color should be a copper or an amber. Noticeable fruit with a little bit of a malty backbone. Given the crystal malt she's in it, I would also anticipate the caramel, toffee, and dark fruit flavors. Some citrus and earthy notes should be noticeable in the aroma. They are not going to be a bitter beer, that'd be wrong for the style. This is an ale, so it used top fermenting yeast. They probably fermented in the typical range of the 60 Fahrenheit, but if they ferment it warmer into the 70 Fahrenheit, that's going to create more fruity ester compounds. It has a decent amount of foam on it, that's probably quarter to almost half an inch light or maybe even a medium, amber, copper, as mentioned before, that is exactly what I was expecting. It is absolutely clear, very transparent, you can see right through it. There is no sediment on the bottom or anything floating, so it has a very clean appearance to it. They use kettle findings, uh, potentially a high flocculating yeast. I don't know that it was filtered. Generally, they cold crash the fermenters, meaning they cool it down when it's done fermenting. That helps drop the yeast as suspension. That is a beautiful light copper, amber, even honey color. Very nice. I get slight spicy and herbal and some earthy out of the nose. There may be a tickling of fruit in there, but it's extremely faint. Almost a delicate citrus tone as well. The spicy herbal 
is the most noticeable, but it's still pretty restrained. Gentle coating in my mouth of a little bit of malt in there with a very slight herbal earthy effect and even more gentle fruit, almost not even noticeable. I do notice just a gentle hop nibbling in the back of my palate. It lingers for a little while and ever so slowly starts to dissipate. It's not a hoppy beer at all. Uh, there's, real, there's just a nibbling, but that's about it. This tastes medium body to me. There is a slight gentle malty backbone to it. I am now noticing a little bit of sweetness, but it's pretty light. That may be some fruit tones peeking out of there, but I'm really having to search for it. I am just not noticing dried fruit at all in this, which is kind of disappointing. Any flavors I get are very restrained. I don't get any toasted notes out of this. No bread, cracker dough. Any sweetness I get, I believe, would be from a crystal malt, not the base malt. No candy tones out of this. If there's no citrusy or piney notes, I can tell. The earthy and herbal were in the aroma. I'm not picking that up out of the body at this point. They talk about raisin, biscuit, and dried fruit. I am actually not noticing any of that at this point. I keep getting coated over and over with that slight, malty, sweet flavor, but there's just not much there. Any fruitiness has just not appeared to me. I don't get any yeast characteristics out of it. The mouth fills up thin and watery, but it's not chewy either. This is actually a complex recipe with all the hops they use in it and a handful of malts. Uh, they seem to talk about having this array of flavors, and I think it fails to deliver there. Once again, opens up and sweeps my mouth. Soft, light coating, maltiness with a little bit of a hop nibbling back there. Slight sweetness to it. The malty backbone is really hitting back here pretty good. And that's immediately followed up with that spiciness from the hops. Still tastes medium body. I'm still getting any dried fruit, whether it be a cherry, a plum, a raisin, none of that. No caramel or toffee notes at all from the crystal malt. No candy notes. I don't taste anything here from the base malt at all. There's no toasted, there's no bread, cracker, uh, that sweetness I would attribute to that. I'm not getting any of the citrus, herbal, earthy, piney characteristics from the hops. Not hoppy at all. There's no bitterness. The flavors still linger for a decent amount of time and slowly evaporate. Malty, slightly sweet backbone too with that hop nibbling spiciness. That's all I get. Any other flavors that they describe are lost on me. This still tastes like it has a decent body to it. It's not thin and watery, but it's not chewy either. A complex recipe, but does not have a flavor profile to match that. Between the bottle and the glass, I can't tell the difference. They taste the same. I don't get any hot alcohols like fusel. There's no astringency mouth puckering. The bowl has not been skunked from sunlight. I don't taste any acetone or paint thinner or chemical flavors. No oxidation, band-aids, cardboard, paper. Will I buy this again? I probably would not. It sounds like such a good beer by the description and I'm just really not that impressed. Will I recommend it? Yes, I would. You might like this beer. I don't think it's bad. It just didn't satisfy my needs and I don't think it lives up to the description. I don't feel this beer is accurate to the style described. It doesn't have noticeable fruitiness or maltiness. Almost bland on my palate, so I am disappointed there. I feel it is below average, but it's not a horrible beer. Fuller's out of London, UK, London Pride, English Pale Ale. If you have any comments, suggestions, feedback, or questions about beer, send me a message. That's all there is for this beer review. Cheers! 
subscribers and just those. No, nah, I don't like that either. Well, I, Fuller's out of London, UK. I'm just not impressed. Oh, am I still recording? No, oh, I thought I stopped.